The explosion in consumer demand over the past year and a half was the trigger of the ongoing global shipping crisis. There was some hope demand for goods would ease this year, but up until now, it has stayed at record highs. On the other hand, wait times have never been longer, and the logistical nightmare faced by global supply chains seems to have no clear end in sight. Experts are now predicting that it'll take at least another year before the shipping crisis starts to stabilize. However, the uncontrolled spread of the new virus variant and the slower pace of staff vaccination may jeopardize that forecast. Unfortunately, this means also the worst is yet to come. Supply chains are about to face many more disruptions, and consumers will have to deal with extensive shortages from now on. According to Business Insider journalist Rachel Premack, there are three major reasons why supply chain problems are expected to extend well into 2022. She says, we're continuing to see a remarkable increase in demand, coupled with a shortage of shipping containers and massive congestion at ports. She explains, the reason we're seeing 2022 as the point when this calms down a bit is that people are expecting that demand will continually decrease as society goes back to normal. Once that happens, ports can work through the existing backlog of containers. That is to say, only after consumer patterns change, congestion at ports will start to show improvements. But considering that the holiday season starts within less than five months, even if consumer demand declines for a month or two, it won't be enough for supply chains to take a breath and fully recover before it starts to tick up again. The backlog at ports is a problem that has only been intensified since March 2020, compounded by a challenge that definitely won't be solved in the next five to six months increasingly large container ships, and ports that haven't been remodeled to accommodate the gigantic vessels we have now. Over the past 50 years, the capacity of the biggest ships has increased 1,500%, having doubled in the past decade alone, according to shipping insurer Alliance Global Corporate and Specialty. These massive ships can deliver more per voyage, but ports like Los Angeles or Long Beach, they weren't made to accommodate ships of that size, explained Framac. Look at what happened earlier this year with the Ever Given, which stalled for six days and blocked traffic in the Suez Canal. These manufacturers thought bigger ships would be better for the bottom line, but the ports weren't renovated to handle them. In fact, the Port of Los Angeles just recorded its busiest month in history, with over one million shipping containers waiting to get unloaded. To make matters worse, a shortage of port workers and the unprecedented volume of cargo are overwhelming longshoremen and seafarers who are having to work for months beyond their contracted lines. Vessels are waiting at least five days just to get into port, and it can take 10 more days for a container to be unloaded so that the crew can make the return trip back to Asia. We feel the importer and the exporter pain, says Gene Sirocco, executive director of the U.S.'s busiest cargo port. The impacts that all of this has had is noticeably hurtful to these men and women who are trying to do their jobs in the supply chain. At this point, the crew change is severely worsening, with thousands of workers trapped at sea for over a year. I've seen grown men cry, revealed Captain Chen Jia Singh, who hasn't set foot on dry land in almost a year and isn't even sure when he'll finally go home. We are forgotten and taken for granted, he said in an interview with Reuters. At least 100,000 workers are stranded at sea as the Delta variant rapidly spreads onshore. The Maritime Labor Convention highlighted that the maximum continuous period a seafarer should serve on board a vessel without leave is 11 months. But many thousands of crew have now been at sea for over 16 months. 
The situation is going from bad to worse. We need more than lip service from governments. We need concrete action that allows crew changes to be carried out in a safe manner, stressed Stephen Cotton, General Secretary, International Transport Workers Federation. With virus outbreaks occurring on ships and endangering the lives of marine workers, further disruptions on trade are expected, according to a new Bloomberg report. Many of these workers haven't had even a day's break on land in months. On the flip side, another 100,000 are stuck on shore, unable to board the ships they need to earn a living on. And now that the Delta variant is devastating parts of Asia, home to many of the world's 1.7 million commercial seafarers, many countries are forbidding land access to visiting crews, even for medical treatment. Can you even imagine the nightmare of being stuck at sea for over a year? According to the United Nations, the situation is quickly evolving into a major humanitarian crisis. Given that only 2.5% of seafarers have been vaccinated, the vast majority of them are not allowed to go back home. For that reason, the UN is pleading governments around the world to class seafarers as essential workers. The crew crisis is being aggravated by restrictions imposed by major maritime nations across Asia, such as South Korea, Taiwan, and China, which have many of the world's busiest container ports. The new rules vary from mandatory testing for crews who've come from or have visited certain countries to complete bans on crew changes and berthing operations. Asia really is struggling, and the only countries you can go about routine crew changes to some extent are Japan and Singapore, described Rajesh Suni, chief executive of Synergy Marine Group, a leading ship manager responsible for 14,000 seafarers. He added, the issue is that we have one set of people who desperately want to go home because they've finished their tenure and another set of people on shore that are desperate to get back on board to earn a living. A new survey conducted by the International Transport Workers Federation, the ITF, found that this crisis has led to almost half of commercial seafarers either considering leaving the industry or being unsure whether they would stay or go. This indicates that an imminent labor crunch could halt global shipping indefinitely and threaten the operations of the global supply chains for months. ITF's Stephen Carden says that seafarers are being pushed to their physical and mental limits, and global businesses better beware of the risks of ignoring the problems faced by these workers. Some in the industry estimate that as many as 25% fewer seafarers are joining vessels than pre-health crisis. We have warned that global brands need to be ready for the moment some of these tired and fatigued people finally snap, he cautioned. Now, keeping in mind that the global economy is heavily dependent on the world's almost 2 million seafarers who operate the global fleet of merchant ships which transport around 90% of the world's trade, the aggravation of this crisis also poses a major threat to the supply chains of the United States. We are extremely reliant on exports to keep our economy up and running. Everything from oil to iron, food, electronics, either comes or is processed overseas. The U.S. supply chains have already been facing multiple challenges with a container ship shortage rippling through the retail industry, while freight prices have soared to record levels, driving up the price of many goods. Situations like this are only making the worldwide shipping crisis worse and more difficult to solve. According to insiders Rachel Pramack, this also means that American consumers should brace for yet higher prices and shortages of many products. Esben Bolson, chairman of the International Chamber of Shipping, said in an interview with Bloomberg that with this new Delta strain, there's no doubt it's setting us back and the situation is getting worse. Demand for products isn't letting up, crew changes aren't happening fast enough, and governments continue to stick their heads in the sand. 
U.S. supply chains are already stretched due to a collapse in domestic production. Delays in the delivery of key parts and products across several industries, extreme weather, and a massive shortage of warehouse workers and truck drivers. Skyrocketing freight costs are also impacting the economy, as our small producers can no longer afford to ship their products overseas. In face of this series of problems, Tom Fairbairn, a shipping expert, warned that those down the supply chain must be prepared for further disruption in the critical run-up to Christmas. As chaos sweeps across global supply chains, we might be headed to a holiday season of empty shelves yet again. Right now, the international shipping crisis is deepening the financial pain faced by our producers, as U.S. agricultural exports are seeing their shipping times increase dramatically. All of this uncertainty is hiking costs and becoming a big headache for U.S. businesses that had become used to reliable, just-in-time delivery. California nut marketers, for instance, remain uncertain whether they'll be able at all to send their products to international markets. Jim Zion, the managing partner of Meridian Nut Growers in California, recently disclosed that he had a load of tree nuts that took 77 days to get to Spain, up from a transit time of 35 days pre-outbreak. I'm just trying to brace our customers for longer shipping times, delays and cancellations, he said. These issues are out of our control. At this point, all U.S. agricultural exporters reported being facing a difficult time moving commodities overseas because of the restrictions and fees charged by maritime shipping companies. Undoubtedly, we will see the consequences of this slump in exports in our trade deficit and being translated into a weaker, less resilient economy. Heated demand doesn't mean much if we can't meet that demand with goods. At the end of the day, high consumer demand isn't a sign of a thriving economy, especially being artificially boosted by government stimulus. The imbalances between supply and demand are only intensifying global supply chain woes. And this crisis will only truly ebb when demand does. The import level we've seen in our past year is astronomical and not something that our infrastructure can handle, as Premack laid out. This is a tumultuous and unprecedented time, and we all should start getting prepared for the imminent chaos while we still can, because there are serious threats emerging on the horizon.